Commodore 64's SID sound chip was pretty darn cool. It allowed the creation of complex and great sounding music that even later computers and game consoles were unable to compete with, bringing out some amazing works by some very talented video game musicians. If you compare it to the NES, for instance, there are a number of advantages. The NES could only produce a few types of sound, and only one type of sound per channel. It had two channels that only played square waves. One channel that only played triangle waves. And one channel for noise. It also had a fifth channel that could use some very limited samples. And there were specific criteria where there could be other channels, but I, I won't go into that. The point is, there wasn't as much dynamic to it. Sometimes it could kind of sound flat and a little hollow. NES music kind of tends to all sound alike. Not saying there wasn't a variety of great music, but you hear an NES song and you can usually tell right away it's NES. Commodore 64's sound channels were much more dynamic. You could do pulse waves, triangle waves, sawtooth waves, and of course noise. And on top of that, they were all highly customizable and interchangeable. While a single NES channel could only play one type of wave, a Commodore channel could change on the fly. It was great, but it had a problem. It only had three channels. Meaning you could only have three tones at any given time. Now, given the flexibility of the chip, composers could easily work within those boundaries and still create something great. There's a ton of great music out there, both from games and from demos. Since the channels were interchangeable, you could layer in sounds into gaps in the other tracks seamlessly. So even if there wasn't a dedicated noise channel, with just a bit of ingenuity, you could fit some percussion sounds in between other sounds, and no one would notice there was any such kind of limitation. Awesome! Now, here's the problem. What do you do about sound effects? You put all this effort into squeezing this awesome music into three channels, now all the sound channels are taken, and your game can't have any more sound. This was, unfortunately, a pretty big problem. A lot of Commodore games tackled it in different ways, and honestly, none of them were great solutions. Solution number one, have the sound effects interrupt the music. I hate this solution. There's so many games with great music that just gets mutilated every time some noise happens. In Commando, your bullets are silent, but every time you throw a grenade, die, or get an extra life, the music just gets hamstrung. Nineteen forty two is even worse. It's a shoot 'em up, and the music gets interrupted every single time you fire a shot. I could go on. The solution actually wouldn't be such a big issue if there were more than three channels. Years later, even Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games were still doing this, but because they had so many more sound channels to work with, they could strategically interrupt a small part of the music so seamlessly, it's really hard to actually notice. The Commodore, however, did not have that luxury. So here's a second solution. Only use two channels for music, and now you have a free channel just for sound effects. Squeezing good music into just two channels can be done, but man is that limiting. There are a few good games that did okay with this, but most of the time, the music was incredibly simple. The third solution? Just don't have music and sound effects at the same time. A lot of games would have music played during the title screen or intermissions or such, and then you just play in relative silence during gameplay. Sometimes there would be a lot of fun with only sounds, and occasionally they could actually create lots of atmosphere. Other times, it just felt bland. 
Some games would just have no sound effects and only play music. Sometimes it would be really energizing or really create a unique feeling, but it just as often felt like something was missing. It just didn't have that certain punch to it. Especially in an action game. When you get a good solid hit, or get hit yourself, it just doesn't have much of an impact. A few games even gave you the option to play with music or sound effects, and sometimes you could even switch between the two modes while playing. A nice idea, I suppose, but that often just makes you have to choose between two kinds of bland experiences. I love Commodore music, but all of these options suck! What may have actually helped a little bit was an early discovery about the Commodore SID chip's analog output. This is a little difficult to explain, but the SID chip had an analog component, and some industrious people figure out how to trick it into outputting samples. He so, aside from just beeps and boops, you could have some actual recorded sounds, including voice. And it was separate from the three audio channels, so it was kind of like having a fourth channel. Awesome, right? Unfortunately, there were some limitations to this, too. Aside from the fact that samples can take up a lot of disk space and memory, playing the samples could also take a lot out of the computer's processor. Most games that used samples had to sort of freeze the game to play the sounds and then continue. So while this analog trick sounds like it could solve the issue by giving you a whole extra channel, it just kind of complicated things even further. Mostly, composers use the sampling ability to add more to the music during the title screen, which is super cool, but again, does not solve the problem. I don't know if anyone ever found a decent solution to this. It's kind of sad. For most video games, the music enhances the experience. It creates a specific mood while you're interacting with it. You can just listen to the music on its own, but it's way more enjoyable to hear it in context with what's happening in the game. And even if you do just listen to it on its own, it makes you think of what it was like when you played it, and how it set the mood for that part of the game. With Commodore games, it's often the opposite. I would very much prefer to hear the music on its own, without worrying about what the game is going to do to hamstring it. Part of me wonders if Commodore games would be a much better experience if the SID chip actually had four channels instead of three, but in a weird way, I wouldn't change it. Commodore 64 was popular because it was affordable. Would an extra sound channel make it more expensive and less accessible? And would that mean we wouldn't see all these amazing creations because the popularity of the computer would be greatly diminished? And part of what makes so much of this music so phenomenal is the creativity in which composers fit what they did into those three channels. If there were four channels, every one of these songs would be fundamentally different from how they are now, and I would live in a world where all my favorite game tracks don't exist anymore. So, for better and for worse, this is how Commodore 64 music is. It's great, but as far as I can tell, nobody ever had a good working solution to the three-channel problem.